Hi, Nellie, old kid. How are you this bright, cheerful, sunshiny morning? Don't try to fool me, Danny Marston. It's Monday morning, and nobody feels that cheerful on Monday morning. Why not? It's all in the way you look at it. Look, you don't look any too happy. What's the trouble? No trouble, exactly. I just feel sort of, well, serious. My Aunt Sue just phoned. She's worried about her son. That's my cousin Harold. You see, Danny, the trouble is he wants to quit school now and get a job. And my aunt and uncle want him to stay with it till he's through high school. And university, too, if they can talk him into it. Oh, they're right, too, by golly. If I could do it over again, I'd get a whole lot more education than I did. It's something you can never get too much of. Mm, you just try telling that to Harold. He says they aren't teaching him a thing that will ever be any use to him. He wants to be a newspaper man. As a matter of fact, Danny, you're sort of a hero to him. Well, I am, eh? Yeah. You know what fantastic ideas adolescent kids get. Thank you, I'm sure. You know, you say the nicest things. Anyway, Danny, I do wish you'd have a talk with him and make him see reason. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. And say, Nellie, that gives me an idea. Yes? Uh, the boss hasn't come across with our assignment for this week yet, has he? No. He's probably running out of ideas. I'd like to suggest to him that I do an article this week on education. It'd make good reading for your cousin Harold, too. Set his thinking straight for him. Danny, that's wonderful. Oh, it was what you said that gave me the idea, kid. I don't know what I'd do without you. As a matter of fact, you're sort of a heroine to me. Oh, Danny, am I? Of course you know what fantastic ideas newspaper men get. <laughs> okay, Mr. Marsden, okay. Now go and talk to the boss. <laughs> What in the world are you looking so scared for? I just can't help it, Danny. I used to attend this high school. And once I was sent to the principal's office, and I was just about scared to death. What have you been doing? A throwing chalk. Nellie McCoy. I'm surprised at you. Oh, I've had my moments. Anyway, here I am again in front of that same principal's door waiting to go in. And I'm just as scared as I was the first time. Oh, it's just a complex or something. I guess so. Mr. Marsden? Yes. Won't you come in, please? Oh, thank you, Mr. Fraser. Please sit down. Oh, thanks. Uh, this is my assistant, Miss McCoy. How do you do, Miss McCoy? Haven't we met somewhere before? Why, well, I... I don't know. I... Right, a chance resemblance, perhaps. Yes. And now, what can I do for you, Mr. Marsden? Uh, my editor has asked me to write an article on education for the Mid-City Sentinel, Mr. Fraser. And I figured that the best way to find out the facts about education was to come to an expert in that field. Yourself, in other words. Well, I've always felt that there were two things to be aimed at in education. The first is an appreciation of democracy. You're a newspaper man, Mr. Marsden, and you must come into contact with a great many people in the course of your work. I'm sure you must have noticed how many Canadians there are in all walks of life who lack an appreciation of what it means to be a Canadian, to live in a free country with a free economy. I have. As a matter of fact, I'm afraid I took a lot of those things for granted myself up until a few weeks ago. Exactly. At this moment, as I speak, young Canadians by the hundreds of thousands are sitting in schoolrooms from Newfoundland to British Columbia, learning about Shakespeare and Oliver Cromwell and the packing industry in Argentina and the square root of X plus Y. And a lot of them, no doubt, are quite fed up with the whole business and are doodling in their textbooks or throwing chalk at one another. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, Miss uh, McCoy? Nothing. I, I just... Uh, nothing. Oh, sorry. I thought you spoke. As I was saying... All that formal learning is part of the business of education, but it isn't the important business of education. What we're aiming to do, Mr. Marsden, is to turn out well-rounded citizens with a reasonably good store of general knowledge. But above all, citizens who'll want to go on learning all their lives, who'll be interested in how the world is run, who will know how to distinguish fact from fancy. I doubt very much whether the big issue that's abroad in the world today the issue of democracy versus statism is going to be finally settled during our lifetime. It may take several generations. In other words, it's going to be up to our children and perhaps to their children. Oh, I never thought of that angle. Here in Canada, we have a precious heritage. It's our responsibility make, to make that heritage still richer before we hand it on to our children. But we must also give those children an education that will enable them to use that heritage to best advantage and protect it if need be. They need a deep and abiding appreciation of Canadian achievement, 
opportunity and freedom. Uh, I'm with you on that. Uh, but you said there were two things uh, an education should aim at. What is the other? The second is the development of a Christian concept. I think that idea is expressed admirably in a publication I've just been reading. Here it is. Listen. There are very few of our observers who do not constantly stress that unless the peoples of the Atlantic nations experience a great spiritual awakening, they will never have the strength successfully to withstand the militant ideology of communism. The civilizations of America, Europe, and the British Commonwealth spring from the Christian tradition. There are very few observers of current world affairs who do not now think that the civilization we are trying to preserve can be saved only by a revival of the beliefs which inspired it. Uh, may I make a copy of that to take with me? You may take this. I, I have another copy at home. Oh, thank you. I'd appreciate it very much, Mr. Morrison, if in your article you would stress the responsibilities of parents in this business of education. Most parents today are alert to the responsibilities, but the point just cannot be overemphasized. Parent-teacher associations are wonderful things. We want to hear from parents. We want their opinions on whether or not we're doing a good job, where they think we may be falling short, and so on. Education in this country is a democratic process, Mr. Marson, and I thank heaven that it is. We've all seen what distorted and savage ideas can be implanted in children's minds when a ruthless dictator gets at them early enough, as Hitler did in Germany. Mr. Fraser, I, I'm very much obliged to you indeed. It's been a most profitable interview. I hope I've been of some help. A and I hope you'll drop in again. Oh, thank you. And you too, Miss McCoy. It's been a more pleasant session than it was the last time you were here, hasn't it? How's your aim with a piece of chalk these days? Still right on the bullseye? <laughs> He's sort of nice, isn't he, Danny? Sure, he's nice. Well, but what are you still looking pale for? Well, I guess it's a complex, like you said. Well, shows how things that happen in your school years stick with you the rest of your life. Well, I wish some of the algebra and history that happened to me had stuck with me, too. Well, let's get back to the office. Taxi? A taxi, mister? Yes. I'm going to treat you to a taxi ride, Nellie. Well. Oh, in you go, Nellie. Where to, mister? Uh, the Mid-City Chamber of Commerce, driver. Okay. Uh, what are your views on education, driver? Uh, education? Brother, I'm for it. If I'd got more, maybe I'd be a lot farther ahead than I am now. Oh, I ain't complaining. I do a pretty good business with this hack. But who knows? If I'd went to college, maybe I'd be a lawyer right now, or president of a bank or something. Well, what do you figure is the purpose of an education? Well, that's simple. To get you places in life. The more education you got, the better jobs you can hold down, and the more dough you can make. That adds up, don't it? I don't know. I've just been talking to a high school principal, and I don't know that he'd agree with you. Well, not entirely, anyway. Well, I don't pretend to know all the answers. Say, how's he got it figured? I guess he ought to know. Well, look at it this way. You can set up schools, and uh, those schools can turn out people who are good mechanics and good carters. Good doctors and good lawyers, and good storekeepers. But that isn't enough. If you don't turn out people who are good citizens, you're wasting your time. Yeah, I guess he's got something there at that. But how's a school going to teach people to be good citizens? That ain't something you can learn out of books. Oh, I'm not so sure. For one thing, you can teach the kids how our economic system works. You know, supply and demand and the incentive to produce and so on. Ah, uh, now, just a minute, mister. That stuff is okay. But how's it going to make the kids good citizens? Knowing all about business is one thing. But now the way I got it figured, see? Being a good citizen is getting out and voting, and voting for the right guy. It's helping your neighbor when he's in trouble and not getting yourself in jail, and all stuff like that. What's business got to do with that? Plenty. Some of the biggest problems we have to face as citizens are economic problems. Strikes, high prices, shortages, government interferences in business, all those things cause unrest and trouble. Yeah, I guess so. Sure. And if we're going to find the answers to those problems, we've got to know something about them, don't we? But are they learning these things in school? That's what I wonder. Is anybody seeing to it that they are learning all about that stuff? That's exactly what I figure on finding out right now. Oh, here we are. This brick building on the corner. So 
what you want to know, Danny, is how much is being done to educate our children to take their place in the free economy. Well, that's just about it, Paul. I figure that you, as one of the leading businessmen in the city and chairman of the Chamber of Commerce's Educational Committee, uh, you ought to be able to give me the answers. Well, I can tell you, for one thing, that at least 70 of the Chambers of Commerce and Boards of Trade in Canada have education committees like the one I'm on. The idea is to keep abreast of the latest trends in education and to work with the teachers of the community and give them any information they might want that we're in a position to give them. In addition, all five typical communities across Canada have been selected as pilot communities, and their local chambers of commerce are conducting an intensive study of methods of education in those communities. You know, Canadian businessmen feel they have a big stake in education because those boys and girls sitting in our schoolrooms now are soon going to become employers or employees. And, of course, they'll all be consumers. The economic system that this country operates under has provided the highest standard of living in the world. And at the same time, it has left people with the greatest amount of individual freedom. Whether or not it will continue to give us the good things of life in ever-increasing amounts depends on the kind of children we turn out of our schools. Now, here's part of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce's official statement of policy on education. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce believes that businessmen should take a more direct and active interest in the policies and administration of our educational system. If our way of life is to survive, we must teach the advantages of democracy. Member boards and chambers, therefore, are asked to form committees on education. One of the first items in such a committee's program of work should be development of an understanding among the teaching profession of the problems of business. At the same time, businessmen should endeavor to understand the teachers' problems. Educators' salaries should be increased to the point where men and women of the highest qualifications, personal and academic, would be attracted to and would remain in the teaching profession. The Chamber considers public expenditures for their education an essential investment by the taxpayers of Canada. We figured to be on the safe 